Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to show you how you can make this five flexible boxes web page layout a responsive one, so that way it renders a little bit better for smartphones and tablets and things like that. Okay, now this is a this is a facsimile of basically Apple's current layout and you can find links to this file up in, in the video description, so go ahead and check that out. And I made actually a couple versions of this. One of them is using divs as the block elements, the other, the other one is using list items as the block elements. Apple actually uses list items. But I had a question, how can we go about making this a uh, more responsive web page, which means it'll display better on narrow devices. I'm in Firefox right now, and if I scaled this page down now, it's it pretty much you get yourself a horizontal scroll quickly. And we did that by design when making this five boxes layout. So let's see if we can't go ahead and remedy the situation. And just as a reminder here, um, when I originally made this container, we did set min and max widths on there, which is what uh, Apple has done for theirs. So let's go ahead and fix this up. I've already given my web page file a new name. And let's go ahead and take care of the very first step is putting in a viewport meta. So I'm going to do meta name equals viewport content equals width equals and I'll go ahead and put in device width which is a pretty common um, value to put in for this viewport meta. And this is basically it's going to it's telling our browser that we want to size this page to whatever the width of the device happens to be, which is pretty important because there are so many devices out there with so many different dimensions that it's not like in the olden days where you could say, I'm going to design for widescreen monitors or regular screen monitors. Now there's everything under the sun. So we have to still give ranges. So with device width. So this meta is going to go right in there. Now I'm not doing everything you should probably do for a responsive design because we'll do that maybe in, in other videos. But I just wanted to do some quick edits. One of the other things I would do with my CSS is also set a max width for my all images to 100%. I never want an image to be wider than the device itself. But I'm not going to worry about that in this one. Now instead of making multiple style sheets, because I did internal styles on this last one, what I'm going to do is use some app media alterations here. So I'm still within the style section on my page. I'm going to go and do a little comment here for myself. Responsive styling for tablets and large phones. Okay, and then I'm going to type in at media screen, because I'm going for screen devices, and a max width of 1023 pixels. I'll explain why I chose that in just a second. And a min width of 600 pixels. Then I do an opening curly braces and then a cl closing curly braces. So my original page had a min width of 1024. So this one is going to do a max width of 1023. So that way all pixels are covered. Now, since I've already created most of my styles, the easiest thing to do is simply to copy and paste the rules that I'm going to need to manipulate. And I'm going to want to manipulate my container, my um, big box, actually not that one. Let's, let's see, let's put in my container rule. And I do want the big box and the promo box. And I think I want this one too. So it's kind of like when I create a style for print. Um, you know, a web page for print, you make the web page look the way you want on screen, and then you uh, make the print version when you're all done. Same thing here. I'm going to make the web page how I want it to look on a big monitor, and then I'll go ahead and make the responsive ones. So the few things I'm going to go ahead and fix here, let's see. Um, I need to adjust these. So max, max width is now going to be 1023 and min width, I'll go down to 600, take care of that. And I'm going to do a couple things with my background image too. The background position is OK, but I'm also going to change my background size to 100%. I want it to scale down, and I'll show you why in just a second. And I also need to make sure I do a background repeat, no repeat. 
All right, takes care of that. Now for my promo boxes, 25% width I'm still happy with. I'm going to knock the height down a little bit though, just so they look a little smaller, smaller in scale. I'm still going to float them to the left because I still want that side by side. But I think I'll go ahead and take these background properties, put them for those promo boxes also. And um, background position, everything seems okay there. And for my anchor tags, I think I'm gonna knock these down a bit too and scale 140. So I'm not making a lot of drastic changes here, but I think you're gonna see the difference. Let me go ahead and save this, jump over to Firefox and refresh the browser. And watch as I scale it down. Now, we talked about this in the original video. As I resize here, you notice my background image doesn't change size. It just simply, you see more or less of it. Now watch as I scale down past 1024. See that shift in the background image? Now my background image is scaling in size 100%. So now we have a responsive page for computer screens, big and small, and now we're getting some large phones and tablets, and we've got a, a, a range here. So that takes care of part of our responsive. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pause here, and we'll tackle in the second part of the video, we'll go even smaller, and we'll go into a vertical orientation, which we'll use for um, iPods and uh, smaller scale cell phones.